Mackenzie and Michael Dewart enjoy watching the girls' soccer team at West High. Their daughter, Allison, once played here too. She enjoyed soccer because she got to knock people around. Sometimes when, the, when she was younger, my wife would you know, say, you know, you know, take it easy, you know, because I'm, I'm tossing her up in the air and you know, throwing her on my shoulder. And, but she, she loved it. I loved it too. Michael says Allison was daddy's little girl and recalls priceless moments they shared together. We'd go down to the beach sometimes and walk through the water. I wanted her facing out so she could see the world. Lindsay shows me pictures of their daughter and introduces me to who she was. She was funny. She loved her sports. She loved her church. We had people come up to the house just saying, she was the first person at West High that ever talked to me. Nobody would talk to me. But Allison sat behind me and she would say, hey, how are you today? And, mm -hmm. and that was just how she was. In the fall of 2005, Michael recalls dropping off Allison at college. It was a fun day because as we were walking from the parking lot to her dorm, I was holding her hand because she would still let me do that. And mom was walking in front, and this truckload of, you know, young hoodlums, I mean boys, were driving down the street. And one guy leans out the window and says, hey, ditch your dad and come with us. And she laughs, and I laugh, and we all laugh, and they all laugh. And, you know, but it was, it was, she wasn't embarrassed. She thought it was funny. They thought it was funny, too. And I thought it was funny as well. I said, this is all right. She'll be okay. You know, she, she'll, she's already popular. Yeah. Maybe not in the, you know, the best way, but... Unfortunately, that would be one of the last memories he'd share with his daughter. On January 7, 2006, Allison's life was cut short when a wrong way drunk driver hit her head on. She was only 18 years old. It was over Christmas break. She had just finished her first semester at LMU, and some of her friends um, from South High that she knew from church were going to go line dancing in Temecula and asked her to go. And I did not want her to go. And so for the first time ever, she pulled the, I'm 18 now, Mom. And so she went. I remember the, the phone call, you know, the dreaded phone call in the middle of the night, right? And she picks up the phone, was on her side, so she picks it up. And she says, hello, yes, this is. And she reaches over, she grabs my hand, and she squeezes it tight. <laughs> this is not good. It was the darkest night I can ever remember seeing on the freeway. It was just like there were no lights anywhere. And she was alive until uh, just past noon. Um, I can see like it happened yesterday. 14 years have passed since that tragic day. Does it ever get easier? No. No, you just learn how to do it. Loss of child is the hardest thing there is. I mean, being a mom is the world's hardest job, and having a mom lose a child, you know, just, that's, upsetting the universe. So we were looking for something that talked about how to deal with the loss of a child. There's this group called the Compassionate Friends and everybody there knows exactly what you're feeling because they've done it. It was just the most amazing feeling to walk into this room of strangers and you could talk to them about what was going on. The Duarts also found healing by giving back, specifically to young ladies who resembled their daughter at West High. The whole thing was to do something for young girls like Allison um, and help them you know, with their career goals. So far, the Allison Duart Memorial Scholarship Foundation awarded 27 students a total of almost $90,000. We like to choose girls who are most like her because she wasn't the best student, she wasn't the best athlete. Three, five was, was, a, was a good great GPA for her. So we're looking for people like that. When we read the little essay prompts that they write, sometimes I'll just go, oh my gosh, this sounds so much like Allison. One just graduated from, from medical school, one's pursuing optometry, we have marine biologists, we have a teacher, we have a couple teachers, we have one young lady who's in ministry. It always makes me happy because she's still doing good work. I mean, Allison's still helping somebody else out. Today, Allison's picture hangs prominently inside the girls' soccer team bunker. The coach at West High, Jessica Murphy, played with Allison. So she actually knew Allison, and she uses this whole story with the girls as a learning experience. And she wants them to know that it's not good to drink and drive, and this is what happens. And inside the Duarts' living room, Allison's ashes are surrounded by angels and images of her happy moments. We didn't make this room about Allison, it just sort of happened that way. 
there she is everywhere. People on the outside, I'll call them, they understand grief as a checklist. And I've always felt that it's more like, it's, it's a carousel. It's because you, you can, you know, you, everything's fine. And then one day you're back on the carousel. That's just for a little bit, but it's always there because she's, every day I look in the mirror and I say, yeah, she's still gone. No. The Duarts now live with a sense of purpose to help others even in midst of their own sadness. Other people are planning birthday parties and weddings. And so I plan events for her to raise money in her memory. It's great because a lot of the girls keep in touch with us. They're grateful to receive the, the help. And um, they'll send us a note every year. And you know, so it, for me, it's just something that I do for my daughter who is not here. They hope others who may also be experiencing similar losses know they're not alone. There are thousands of people out there just like you who know exactly what you've gone through or are going through, and they are willing to help. You may be saddened and surprised by the people who will not help you, who you might expect to step forward and do not, but you will be amazed by how complete strangers or people you had no idea, even knew who you were, will come forward and help you out. All you have to do is be open to it. Sharing stories that matter in your community. For Faces of Torrance, I'm Christine Lee.